Assalamu alaikum and welcome again to The Entrepreneur. Um, as you know, here we meet uh, individuals, successful individuals, uh, and we have one such individual with us today. Uh, we go through a journey of uh, a success, uh, if you like. Um, today I have with myself um, Mr. Sh Abdul Shahid, who's a business entrepreneur. He's director of Shaporan Plastics, manufacturing and packaging plastics, that is. Um, he's also director of Cafe uh, it says Cafe Marsala, and then, and then next to it it says Masala. So I think Marsala became Masala, and we'll, we'll uh, find out why in, in a little bit. Um, and also he's got another three restaurants in the local vicinity. So definitely a business entrepreneur, uh, definitely successful, um, especially running all those businesses. And we'll learn about how and why he got himself into this type of business and how he became successful. First of all, I'd like to welcome Mr. Abdul Shahid. Welcome, Shahid Bai. Assalamu alaikum, Sharif Bhai. I feel humbled and blessed to be on your show. The pleasure is all mine and, uh, you know, very lovely to have you here. Uh, now, as you, have, as I've just mentioned, we talk about business and we talk about um, uh, individuals who have uh, gone into business, why they go into business. Now, your business here, we'll talk about the, the plastics uh, of company first of all, and then maybe we'll talk about the, uh, quite interesting, the uh, other um, restaurants that I've got written down here on my list. The plastic business itself, tell us a little bit about that. What is uh, my manufacturing business is in Bangladesh, right. in the uh, Bangladesh uh, se sector in industrial zone, right. which is in Khadim Silet. Okay. Now, uh, when I was in retail management, right. and I used to see, I used to be manager for Barrett Shoes. Right. And I was the youngest manager for Barrett Shoes. Okay. I okay. took about 400 branches <laughs> right. when I was 18, right? Wow, mashallah. Now, uh, okay. the, uh, again, I feel <coughs> blessed for that. Now, I used to see a lot of shoes made in India and used to come. Now, then I knew butter sandals you can buy for 70 taka. And I used to think they, pr they manufactured pay this less than 50p or maybe 30p. Yeah. So then I thought, because I get involved in And they're selling it for how much here? The, <coughs> uh, then it was like 12 99 right? And, and, and in, in Bangladesh, 19, you can sell it? 1988, I'm talking about. Right. Long time ago. And you can buy it for 70 takas, which yeah. is uh, less than a pound, I would say. Yeah, exactly. Or then maybe just so a the pound. the manufacturing cost is pennies, basically. Right, and uh, I get involved with uh, community work right. back in my village in right. Bangladesh okay. as well as here. Yeah, and I'm very uh, uh, it's a part of who I am. Okay, right, and uh, I like to uh, see the prosperity of right. my local village right. and the poor people Absolutely. and destitute people. So, I thought, you know what, we've got a piece of land in Bangladesh yeah. near the main uh, Dhaka Road, right, right by Silet because I'm from Tetli in uh, okay. uh, uh, Dokkinjurma. Okay, right, so I thought one day I'm going to build a factory on that plot of land. Right. And you were how old then you, when you're thinking this? I was 18. <laughs> okay. Right? And I said, um, right, I want the prosperity of my local environment and see how the well. economic development and growth takes place. And hopefully people can earn their way through to earn their own income Ashallah. rather than be dependent on right. cha charity. So your intention there is straight away is an altruistic uh, 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 thinking that you want to help the destitute and the, and the poor in your area. Yes, but what you did was you clocked on to the fact that 70 taka you can buy a, a pair of butter in Bangladesh and here is about what, 12, like 13, then something 13 like it, yeah. times more. Mm -hmm. um, so what you clocked on was if they're selling you for 70 tackers, manufacturing is costing much less. And you can also, you can make a profit, but at the same time, you will be helping uh, the, local, uh, the, the local poor people around, which is a fantastic intention. Uh, carry on, <laughs> what you say. And then obviously, uh, as uh, uh, time went by, uh, and uh, it's always been in the forefront that one right. day I'm going to go into manufacturing in Bangladesh. Right. But unfortunately, I couldn't do it on the land that uh, was designated there. Right. Reason why is because Bangladesh is drawing a lot of uh, inward investment, okay. foreign investment, okay. right? And they're designating places like a basic area. Right, right. Okay. And they want people to establish their factories there. Okay. So I had an opportunity because manufacturing is in my head, and that's what's made me go into the plastic factory. Right. My partners who are here, we are. they also wanted to do a factory out there. And so okay. we sat together. So you got like-minded people who want to do right, the same absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Right. right. And uh, I had an opportunity. Manufacturing was always in the forefront of me, and that gave me the uh, drive just to say, yes, right. I want to get involved. Okay. And well, it's interesting that at the age of 18, you thought of that, uh, um, that, that idea. And how old were you when you actually implemented it? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, not long ago, four years ago, well, because opportunities come and go. Ab absolutely. And you have to uh, open your own door, so you have right. to knock on people's door. Yeah. 
Absolutely. People are not going to open your door for you. Definitely. You have to go and knock on the door. Definitely. And I believe an helping hand, uh, there's nothing wrong in it. Right. No, right? no, no, absolutely And not. I've always uh, made my uh, uh, you know, ambitions uh, yeah. clear to people right. around me what I'd like to do. Well, look, the thing is, uh, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get at is, is something that you dreamed of, let's say, when you were 18, and even though you did it four years ago, I mean, you're much older than 18 now. I'm not <laughs> going to mention your age. Uh, but you've put it into fruition at the, at the end of the day because you had that idea. And that is fantastic because it's something that you did not let go of. I mean, there are a lot of people who think of so many ideas that come into our head, um, but it doesn't, it's not implemented. It, we forget it, uh, you know, a, a short while later. So that is a brilliant, and I think that for me, it's, it's, it's definitely inspiring. Um, now, how is it going? The four years now with the, with the plastic factory, how is it going? Alhamdulillah, well, obviously the... Um uh, internal politics in Bangladesh. Yeah, it's that's a never, difficulty, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah, there's a difficulty, and to overcome many obstacles is even a greater di difficulty yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's uh, not in my power. No. Because uh, as a businessman myself, I'd like to feel that I can make the uh, decisions, yeah. the right decisions, yeah. and it's within my control. Mm. And, uh, you know, to be a good manager, you have to be decisive. Absolutely. But if the control's not with you, you yeah. cannot be. So uh, the factory itself is paying for itself. Yeah. And okay. I've got a future ambition mm. is that, you know, if I can import my goods here okay. and use uh, my networking right. here to distribute my packaging products in the UK. What you just mentioned there is, is I mean, it's very unfortunate because Bangladesh is a place of opportunities, you know, with, with uh, the, the population uh, and the growth and so forth. But people are reluctant. Uh, and because of the policies that are put in place and a lot of corruption as well, unfortunately for, for, for ourselves. Um, but when you can actually struggle and overcome those, uh, those um, uh, obstacles, it just shows that how, how much of a good businessman you are and how much determined you are. Am I right to say I, that? I, yeah. Alhamdulillah, I mean, you have to be prudent, right? Yeah. I mean, I always saw an opportunity in Bangladesh. I still see an opportunity in Bangladesh, yeah. regardless of the obstacles, right? And I think uh, the current uh, uh, trade investments uh, that's been offered right. to uh, foreign investors, I think is the best it's ever been, yeah. right? Yeah. So I won't put people off from investing in Bangladesh. No, I mean, Bangladesh right? is one of, the, one, of the, one of the top places to Well, it's the 39th largest uh, economy at the current moment. It yeah. was predicted to be in uh, 2020. But it is but surpassed that, yeah. In uh, 2019, yeah. alhamdulillah, yeah. our country is and the it's doing much better than the neighboring countries as well. So, yeah, absolutely. But and the GTB growth, uh, yeah. you know, is... Well, let's just hope average. the government, you know, makes it uh, slightly easier for us and people from, you know, uh, expatriates like, like ourselves to sort of go and invest and and because we love our country right and uh, of course you know okay well l l moving on because there are a few other things that we want to speak about so the package the uh, factory is going well factory is going you're, you're well i hope it. we could develop it more yeah but uh, obviously being in this country yeah. and uh, not visiting it enough no. uh, it's uh, limited uh, mm. Uh, my uh, potential. Right. Well, with your background and, and as we what we spoke about, I'm sure it will grow uh, when it's, when there's people like yourselves behind it. So you know, best of luck with that. Um, now, I've got written down here. Uh, you, you're you're director of uh, four restaurants. Uh, well, that's not an easy task, is it? Uh, and I mean, how does that feel when, when I'm when I'm saying director of four restaurants? You got the uh, director uh, of Chaperon Plastic. It must make you feel. Well, uh, I'll be honest with you. It's not. I've, I've never been hungry for money, okay. but I've been hungry for success. Fantastic. Okay. Right? Wow. And my success, I'm inspired by my father. Okay. So That's a good when I came it. back in 1970, when I came, my dad brought us over in 1975, right. my uh, dad and his brother came over in mid-60s. Uh, okay. Right? And then my dad brought us over in uh, 1975. And uh, old, I saw old, the struggles Londonese, my yeah? father faced, my mother. Yeah. And, you know, in those days, yeah. it was tough growing up I'm in sure. uh, uh, Greater London Council run by Ken Livingstone. We had a lot of national fronts, okay. right? Though education was not in the forefront. It was more survival. Absolutely, and I yes. saw how my dad survived, yeah. you know, to bring the pennies on the table, make sure the food was provided, uh, you know, the provisions are there, so we're eating well. Uh, was that something well. that motivated you Absolutely. to become, uh, you know, successful Absolutely. and not to be... Let's say, I mean, look, your dad 
everybody's fathers are role models for them. I mean, if they're not He's role models... He's definitely a role model yeah, for me. So, yeah. Even so, now, yeah. at 48, I'm going to turn 49, yeah. uh, uh, inshallah, you mentioned if I live, idea, I right, <laughs> till uh, next year. But uh, my dad's always been my role model yeah. and he's always inspired me yeah. in what he's done. But dying. because of the hard work, because you've seen the kind of hard work they did, and you being a good son, obviously, I mean, a lot of children, they might not look at it uh, in that way, but you've seen it, you've seen the hard work, and it motivated you, and you thought, you know what, I'm going to make a better life of myself. But you see, these, those people, your father's generation, for example, when they came to this country, they came to this country with this, uh, this, this drive, okay? You know, nowadays, we lack that drive. So they, they came to this country with the drive. We, we're going to go there. We're here to make money. We're, ma we're here to make money, make a better life for ourselves. Do you understand? In the olden days, you remember how it was sending money back home. You know, the yeah. house has got to be built, the land's got to be bought, and, and so forth. So we there were a lot of pressure. But yeah. you know, Alhamdulillah, I saw them how they sustained everything. Yeah. And they had a stable lifestyle. Right. And I adopt, try to adopt that discipline. Okay. Right. Unfortunately, we all have ups and downs. As children oh, grow up, yes. you know, we make yep. mistakes. Yep. And, uh, you know, we're human beings. Main yep. thing is, uh, can we relish from our mistakes, rectify yep. our mistakes, yep. and uh, be a better person? Yep rather than re regret on our past, no, right, no. is can we relish it and turn into a positive thing? Well, I think mistakes are good because it's, if it's something that you learn from, um, making as many mistakes uh, at, a, at a younger age is, is um, I think, is vital because you don't want to make those mistakes later in life. So it's better to make them. Okay, so your, your father was definitely a role model and okay. you, uh, your motivation was from him and all that. Um, now, what I wanted to mention was the restaurant business which is uh, the backbone of many um, Bengalis, uh, you know, of our community. Um, now, it says here, Cafe Marsala, and, and then it became Masala. Okay. Why, what's the story behind that? I, I'm very uh, innovative okay. in my thinking, yeah. okay? When okay. I uh, did my uh, O-levels there, right. I always chose my science subjects, which I loved, yep. and business studies. Business okay. studies because I observed my dad, Right, okay. like I said, he was my role model. Yeah. You know, he never went to school. He can he can read, but he cannot write. Okay. But you know what? He's Alhamdulillah had a good property portfolio in London. Fantastic. Right. He's had a leather factory in Brick Lane. Right. He's done, like you said, yeah. he's built a home in Bangladesh. He's right. had land acquired. You know, he's got uh, shops in uh, Bandar Bazar and right. everything. So I'm as inspired. I go, if he can do it, I can do it. So I've always so taken business. Even though he couldn't write, you would say, I mean, he could read, but he couldn't write. Mm -hmm. So what, what we'd say is, I mean, we can understand those times and we don't, um, uh, we don't want to put this message forward that, uh, you know, uh, reading and writing is not important. Absolutely, education is, is mm -hmm. at the forefront. Um, but the, the point here I'm trying to make is because he had that business mind. So he was a business-minded person. So when you're business-minded, nothing stops you, even if you lack in education slightly. So that's a come from him. That's right. deprived onto me. And Alhamdulillah, I'm blessed. Okay. Because who I am and what I am today yeah. is because of his uh, forward thinking. Right. So like I said, uh, now education is the forefront of everything. Yeah. Then they educated themselves. So education was there. Yeah. And I've learned that you can educate yourself. And I done a uh, mature student, I done an MBA mm. when I was 27 as a mature student. <coughs> right. Because I needed to enhance my academic knowledge. Right. But anyway, coming back to Cafe Masala yes, yes. and Masala, what happened? I bought it as an Indian res uh, Italian restaurant. Right, okay. Right? Interesting. And because I've got retail uh, background with Pizza Hut, mm. with Barrett Shoes, yeah. for me, it's another product. Okay. And I thought, I'm not going to turn it to an Indian restaurant. Right. I'll keep it as a running concern. Okay. And so I went in there as a kitchen porter, not knowing they. I was going to be their owners right. in about six weeks' time because okay. obviously I had to wow. keep it a secret. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. right? Okay. 160 quid. You know, the guy said, look, in case the deal doesn't go through, don't tell them that you're buying the place. All right, but okay. we exchanged so the contracts you're, you're, already. So you were an undercover uh, a kitchen porter. You, you were as a, to become that was your alias. Because we exchanged the contracts. Yeah. Yeah. And then I thought, this is a piece of cake for me, right? right. I could run this as an Italian restaurant. Okay. And uh, I ran so it did for you learn two and a half years. Of course I did, right. <laughs> right? okay. like uh, profiter rolls to uh, tiramisu, wow. uh, to uh, all the steak dolce latte, pepper verde, right, Fantastic. and uh, lasagna, anything, arabatia sauce. Brilliant. Not ready-made stuff, I'm doing a proper stuff. All, and I worked with some all really Italian good dishes, Italian eh? chef, yeah. And I picked, uh, you know, alhamdulillah, if I touch and see and feel things, I pick right. up things very quick. Okay. And so then I learn. I'm very in innovative, like I said, I think what I can and develop. Right. But of course, like I said, you have to be prudent. Absolutely. So what happened? After two and a half years, we wanted to do a major refurb. 
right. which we did. Okay. And I thought, let me bring the Indian bit and bring the fusion in. Okay. So I called it Cafe Marsala because right. Italian cooking requires a lot of masa Marsala wine. Ah. That's where the Marsala comes from. Right, okay. Right? Uh -huh. And then now we, our now we word, which we say Moshla, Yep. In English is masala, masala mm. right? So, so you intertwine those two. Exactly. So it's called Cafe Marsala Fusion. But Brilliant. because I wasn't prudent enough, we make mistakes. Yeah, but yeah. you know what? You learn from your mistakes. Yep. And you know, Charles Darwin said, uh, your biggest mistakes is your biggest achievements. Right? <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> right? But uh, what, what I'm trying to say, so unfortunately, uh, the fusion, there was a demand for it. Right. But because I wasn't prudent enough in my uh, wise knowledge about the logistics of it, okay. right, in one kitchen I was providing Indian and Italian, it just did not work. So it I didn't work, right. It did not work because I never had the space right. and uh, like I said, I didn't thought it through on, that, on the logistics It is side. quite different though, isn't it? I mean, it's uh, different in a very big but scale. It was busy, the restaurant was busy, but okay. if you can't provide the food on time, Absolutely. business not there. So no. I, there was a turmoil for me, and I thought, okay, I need a little break. Right. So, alhamdulillah, I went off to Umrah. Okay. I spent the whole Ramadan there, right. went to Bangladesh. I took two months break because right. there was a pivotal time yep. where I didn't know which way to go because we invested a lot of money in that restaurant. Okay. Right? And that was a down point for me. So, what I did, I thought, well, what's, how, do, how do I recover? Recover. And every time I know, if I know that Allah is there for me. Absolutely. Right? So I thought, let me get away from everything. So Money is not right. important in life. So I, went, I came back after two months and I, first week I said straight away, right, Italian menu off. Why? Everybody. Because I was able to make a wise decision because it wasn't working. Right, okay. Right? Because we couldn't provide the service. Okay. And right. uh, what happened is we stopped the Italian. Everybody was shocked. How could you suddenly do it? I go, I can't suddenly do it. And, I'm a decision and you just came back from Umrah as well. That's and you it. Yes, the, the very first week it, I came in the restaurant within three days, I decided. It alcohol Indian. as well, right? right? So that and uh, we converted to uh, Indian straight away. And then, yeah. Alhamdulillah, everything. Thing. So what I did, I took the R right and turned it to an S. Okay. So it's called right. Masala now. All right. So mushla. <laughs> now it's all pure Indian. And ever right. since, uh, the sustainability has been good. Okay. Obviously, with the uh, economic situation and with all the turmoil we're facing now with uncertainty, yeah. business will fluctuate. Okay. And I hope my uh, uh, comrades in the trade we ho hopefully could get together, even as bipartisans, yeah. regardless of what organizations do, see if we well, can there are a lot uh, recover of organizations, this uh, yeah. uh, trade, because it's a very profitable trade. Is, there yeah. is a future there. If we are prudent enough, mm. right, we can still m make this uh, four billion plus uh, a pound industry yeah, yeah. into even a greater success. Well, like you said, I mean, look, people have to eat. Um, and like you said, you've got to be prudent uh, and uh, you've got to be determined. Uh, and this business, I don't think it will ever die out. I, I personally don't think you. I mean, they're going through a phase now. Restaurant businesses, they're going through quite a few, you know, difficulties. But personally, I don't think it will ever die out. Okay. As long as we need food and clothing. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. It will never well, well, die. that's the story behind Marsala to Masala, which Absolutely. was um, um, uh, boggling my mind. So I, I needed to know that. Um, now you've got a, a, a three more, is it? Little India, Mem Saab, uh, and Indian Villa, which are in the local vicinity. Uh, how are they running? Are you a part of the uh, management or I, I, is it partners that run it? I mean, I, again, because of my dad, if he didn't do a restaurant in Long Milford in Suffolk, right? Okay. right? And he, uh, because I'm his son, he goes, your business is there, why are you working for somebody else? Because I took a little break from businesses yeah. and everything. Okay. And I, I was working in London. Right. And then he sent, you know, he uh, requested that I go and then run that restaurant, which was uh, in, uh, you know, dire straits, basically. Right, okay. And because of my experience in retail management, turning around business, mm -hmm. because my main skill is uh, going into problem businesses, okay. identifying problems, finding a solution, yep. and uh, uh, turn around the business Fantastic. to its heydays. Right. right, that's my main skill in uh, running a business. And Alhamdulillah, I've done that quite okay. successfully and I've got a good track record of right. that. So my dad got my cousins and everybody to persuade me right. because I don't want to go 70 miles out in the countryside when I'm a London boy. Yeah. But you know what? It changed my life. Wow. When I went there, it changed my life completely. Fantastic. So what my dad convinced me to do has uh, had an impact on me. Brilliant. And Brilliant. then when that, he sold his restaurant, I decided to stay there and expand myself because I thought it was a great so democratic So we would say your, your success, your dad's got a big part to play in it. 
Absolutely, right? absolutely. Um, and we've talked about the, the the plastics firm and how you got into that. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, is to you know benefit the viewers uh, and for them to learn uh, how someone can be successful and you know, the drive behind it and determination. Um, we talked about all the other other restaurants. Um, now, what about quickly? If you just mentioned a slight little bit about your personal life uh, and how how is that going and what kind of difficulties have you, you know you face with personal life and business putting it together? Well, I've uh, I'm married, alhamdulillah, 20 years now. Okay, mashallah. Right, and I always believe that where there's a will, there's a way. Right. We'll always go through ups and downs in life. Yep. Okay, and everybody's got uh, personal issues. Sometimes uh, that can empower. But your it hasn't it hasn't affected your business life then, no? Uh, it's I, I've had bit of ups and downs in okay. my life. Right. right. Okay. People who know me personally, I'm not shy from a lot of things. No. But this is not the show to talk about it. No. <laughs> but all I can say is, if you have aspirations. Yep. Right. You have ambitions. Yep. Right. Find something that inspire you. Is that, right. is that one of the tips that you'll give our, uh, Absolutely. our viewers? Absolutely, I'm giving a tip to your yeah. thing. So I've been inspired by my dad. Okay. He's worked hard he's, yeah. during seasonal time. He's done 17, 18 hours. Yeah. And I've seen the struggle he's faced. So that was kind of an, a negative that you turned to positive, right? So you saw your dad yeah. ha working hard and stuff like that. And yeah. you turned it so positive. So this is, of course, absolutely. And I thought, if he can do it, I can do it. And so you would, know you say, would you say any negativity that you see... Uh, you can turn it into absolutely. A, a, it's a stimulation. A Anything yeah. that negative yeah. comes my way, and that, I step back in itself, yeah. and uh, you know, I say, right, how can I stimulate myself and change that negative uh, force into positive force? Fantastic. And Alhamdulillah, like I said, you know, if you've got the willpower, you can do it by determination, right? You can't. You you have to have that willpower and the determination. Uh, We've had those two, definitely. right? And believe in Allah, right? You 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 cannot drive yourself forward. Fantastic. Well, we're short of time, so um, maybe uh, any future plans? You want to mention something? Well, I, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm always hungry for success, like I said, okay. right? I've had a lot of failures. It hasn't put me down right. because part of success is failures. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Like I said, I've never been hungry for money. Right. But whatever Allah rewards, whatever is in my rizek, alhamdulillah, I'm happy. Fantastic. Right? Fantastic. But Fantastic. I'll always try my best. As long as you make an effort and you've done your 110% right, right, you should get the self-satisfaction. Okay. That should give you the self-esteem to rise. Don't worry about how people look down on you. So there you are many, many, many plans do. at the moment. Uh, of course. Nothing I, particular in the no, pipeline. As long as uh, Allah gives me sustainability, <laughs> good health. <laughs> you know, your, your, your health is... Uh, your wealth is your health. Absolutely. Right? No, no, definitely. Your uh, health is your wisdom. Okay. Your health is your... Uh, uh, Experience, you know, it's not just money. People always re relate wealth to money. It's not necessarily it right. Money is just the part that keeps you sustain what you need in every day. But your well-being is the most important thing, and that's the biggest wealth you can have. And if you believe in really? that. Allah will, and you put the effort in. Allah will take you to this step. Definitely, that you need definitely, to go. definitely. I, you know, thank you for uh, for for the, the fantastic tips that you've given us, and I think those the ending uh, the words were just brilliant. And you know, uh, for our viewers especially, um, health, wealth, and all those things put together. I, it's absolutely true. You know, what's wealth without health? You've got to be fit and, and happy and to feel and enjoy that, uh, that, that wealth as well. Um, so, you know, Shahid Bhai, very, very big thank you to you to come to the show, for you to come to the show. And, uh, you know, I've, it was my pleasure to have you here. Oh, like uh, I said, I'm and, humbled. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And uh, for the viewers, um, you've heard it from uh, a very successful business entrepreneur uh, who is involved in many things. And um, the tips that he has given us at the end, I think they're vital. Uh, but Thank you for watching. Um, from myself, Sharif Islam. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.